Hey guys, my name is Russian Badger, and welcome back to my updated assault rifle weapon guide. And I know I already made one of these, but I decided to make a new one for two very pertinent reasons. Okay, reason number one, the patch changed everything, and I didn't want to leave you guys with incorrect statistics. Like, for example, the patch changed damage values, recoil values, and I really wanted to update you on the stats. I didn't want to leave you with incorrect information that the previous guide now has. And reason number two is that the FAMAS and the L85A2 were not included in the last guide because obviously Back to Car Cam was not even out yet. So essentially this video will clear up the previous shortcomings of the last guide. And as always, I know you probably know this as you click on the video, but you're going to notice that the gameplay is drastically subpar. Like it's awful. And you want to know why? Because I'm an awful player. And I know a few of you have tried to do it refute that saying, hmm, Badger, you're actually moderately mediocre sometimes. Well, I don't even agree with that. Like, by comparison, there are so many players that are much better than me, and most of the footage is essentially, oh, look at me, I can flank the enemy and shoot a bunch of people in the back with an assault rifle. I'm so special. But I intend this video to be more statistically informative to the point where you receive some sort of benefit out of it and feel as if I have not wasted your time and less of, Oh, look at my montage streaks, bro. They so sick. Did less of that and more stats and information about the weapons. So more informative and less bragging, if you will. And I also anticipate if I have rational prediction skills by any means, like, it's going to be at least 30 to 40 minutes. Like, if I have any kind of prediction skills, it's going to be at least 30 to 40 minutes. So for your convenience, I have included a table of contents in the description. Down there, you can... Skip between the different parts of the video. So if you only want to see a specific number of assault rifles instead of watching the entire thing and believe me watching 40 minutes of me it probably is probably some sort of torture. So you can skip between, you know, the M16 or the A94 or the G3A3. You can skip to specific assault rifles using the links in the description. And that essentially concludes the introduction. So from there we're going to dive into the basics of bullet damage, multipliers. I said that really multipliers what are those like multiple sets of pliers but okay i'm gonna move into damage multipliers and magazines the bullets in battlefield 3 function like this each round that you fire has a maximum and minimum damage output depending on how far away your target is if your target is within eight meters of you when you fire your bullets you'll deal a maximum damage and if your target is at 50 meters or beyond when you hit them, you'll deal a minimum damage. And in addition to maximum and minimum damages, there are also several body part multipliers. For instance, when I shoot Mr. Gator here in the chest, torso, or arm area, my bullets deal a base damage with a 1.0 multiplier. But if I were to shoot him in the kneecaps or anywhere in the legs, it would deal 10% less damage with a multiplier of 0.9. And finally, if I were to shoot Mr. Gator here, directly in the face, or in the dome piece, or anywhere in the cranium, it would have a 2.0 multiplier, dealing double damage compared to torso shots. And yes, I know this contradicts my personal philosophy of always aiming for the kneecaps, but it should be blatantly obvious that if you can hit the guy in the face, hit the guy in the face, because it does the largest damage multiplier. Plain and simple first person shooter knowledge. But beyond the damages, the reloading and magazine technique in Battlefield 3 functions in a very, very peculiar way, if you ask me. First off, it should be noted that if you expend all of the bullets from your magazine, you reload at a slower rate compared to if you don't. You'll notice that when I mention specific assault rifles, I'll give you two reload times. The reload time when empty, and the reload time while containing rounds in your current magazine, with the empty reload time always being longer. In addition to having a longer reload time if you fire all of your bullets, you also do not receive the benefit of a bullet in the chamber. And I know or a lot of you are just going to say, just, eh. The uh, uh, round in the chamber, is that really even a benefit? Well, it's debatable, but I might, might as well explain it anyways. Okay, so you'll notice that the assault rifles, while fully loaded, have a 31 round capacity, right? Well, the standard magazine for the assault rifles is only 30 rounds. In order to get this round in the chamber, having a 31 round capacity, you can go one of two ways. You can simply reload your assault rifle before you've expended all of the ammunition in your current magazine, or, if you're on empty, you can reload twice. However, I find this very stupid. Like, thinking about this logically, taking an extra 2-3 to three second reload for one extra bullet does not seem justified to me, but if you want to do it, by all means, bro. And one last thing. About attachments, I usually use the foregrip and the flash suppressor 
that's really weird to say, flash depressor, flash depressor, but I use the foregrip and flash depressor on pretty much anything. Like, I know a lot of people have had a lot of success lately after the patch with not using a foregrip and using a heavy barrel instead of a flash depressor, but beyond statistics, I just find that I am the most successful when I use a foregrip and a flash depressor compared to anything else. I'm not backing it up by any sort of figures or statistics or any kind of pen to paper like oh this is why this is this attachment is better than the other I simply have the most success with flash suppressor and foregrip that's my justification for my attachments it's by the fact that there are probably better combos that I don't even know about use what you want bro and that is just about it for the basics and we're gonna start out with my personal favorite assault rifle despite the fact it's probably not the best one and that is the French FAMAS or FAMAS or however, however you like to refer to it FAMAS the FAMAS has a maximum damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 18.4, firing at a rate of 1,000 rounds per minute and having a magazine capacity of 25 rounds. It's capable of firing fully automatic, burst, and single firing modes, and it has an empty reload time of 3.9 seconds and a reload time of 3.2 seconds while still containing rounds in your current magazine. And that's most definitely the first thing you notice while using this assault rifle. Like, the FAMAS is just infamous, if you will, for having a long reload time, which I just... L I lean back in my leather chair and I just laugh at it. I just laugh at it. Like, I look at it this way. The FAMAS reloads in 3.9 seconds while empty and 3.2 seconds while not, right? We covered this. Okay. Well, the RPK-74M, which is an LMG, has the ability to reload an extended magazine of nearly 200 rounds in a time of 4 seconds while empty and 3 seconds while not. Hmm... Those reload times are virtually identical, yet one gives you 25 rounds with a FAMAS, and the other gives you nearly 8 times that at 200 rounds with the RPK-74M. Uh, that's what I like to call logic, sponsored by DICE. And in addition to the awful reload time, the FAMAS is also... It just struggles with recoil. Like, the initial recoil is so high, and it has what I like to call popcorn recoil, where your reticle sort of just bounces around instead of being sharply vertical, like for example the L85A2. And this obviously means that it it's just not favorable for medium to long range engagements. Like, at that distance, like if I see an enemy from medium to long range, like if I just see him, I'll just say, eh, eh, I'll get closer to the guy and then I'll shoot at him. How about that? Like, the recoil and accuracy over range is just that bad. However, despite the fact that this weapon did get very, very hurt from the patch, obviously the, the magazine count went down and the... Like, it's just not as good as it was pre-patch, now that it has 25 rounds instead of 30 rounds in a magazine. But it's still very lethal if you use it correctly. And it's main strength, and this is where it shines. It just shines above every other assault rifle in this one respective category. It fires at a thousand rounds per minute, meaning that it kills extremely quickly. Only the AN-94 kills faster than the assault class, with a burst fire rate at 1200 rounds per minute. So, it's pretty close to being the fastest killing assault rifle. Essentially, when I use a weapon, I just I just jump at people and mow them down like I'm using a flamethrower because my FAMAS almost always kills quicker than whatever weapon the catfish is using. Like, very rarely are you gonna see it. Like, I'm thinking about none of the none of the SMGs kill faster than the FAMAS. Like, the FAMAS is just so overpowering to the majority of the other weapons in close range in the game. That's where you gotta make it work. It's just in close range, you just have to. You just have to jump in front of the guy with your foregrip and your blinding flashlight even... Yes, even after the patch, the flashlight is still blinding. You just gotta jump in front of the guy with your flashlight and your foregrip and you just gotta destroy him. Just destroy everybody in close quarters. And that is exactly how I recommend that you use it. Just jump into the guy's face like your Master Chief and hope that you get a kill before you expend all of the bullets in your tiny 25 round magazine. And that's about it. And the next weapon on the list is the L85A2. The L85A2 has a maximum damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 18.4, firing at a rate of 650 rounds per minute, having a magazine capacity of 30 rounds, and it has a empty reload time of 3.4 seconds and a reload time of 2.8 seconds, while still containing rounds in your current magazine. And unlike the FAMAS, man, the L85A2 is deadly over range. It has a low rate of fire at 650 rounds per minute, which means that oftentimes it makes the weapon much more suited for medium range engagements and the favorable recoil also helps out tremendously, and by favorable recoil, okay, I mean this. Overall, the recoil is very light, but it's also balanced to the left and to the right. That means instead of kicking up and to the right, 
like the M16A3 for example, it has a consistent vertical recoil and it's very, very easy to control. It's very up and down and very linear. So for the medium to long range engagements, this weapon is just, it's so deadly. Like you, you'll get guys at medium range that you just think, uh, no, no, I'm not gonna get this guy. I'm not, somehow got the guy. You will surprise yourself with this weapon. And the drawback, however, is that the low rate of fire means the LED 5A2 is not as effective in close quarters. However, you can get the job done if you play it intelligently. What if I... Okay, I'll explain it this way. With the AEK 971 or the FAMAS, for example, I can run around like a catfish and play really sloppy and still win gunfights in close quarters because my high rate of fire makes up for it because most of the time my gun kills faster than that of the enemy, right? But that's not at all the case with the LED 5A2, as you really don't kill as fast as the FAMAS or the AK-971 or a lot of the carbines or a lot of the engineer guns. You just don't kill as fast as a lot of the other weapons do in close quarters in Battlefield 3. In fact, this weapon kills the slowest of all the assault rifles in close quarters, tied with the AK-74M. So, normally, I adopt a much more reserved style of play with this weapon because you'll notice it just isn't suited for run and gun, due to the low rate of fire. Not that you can't run and gun, but you're better off choosing a FAMAS or an AK for run and gun. And this gun is essentially my ultimate lurk spot weapon. Like, I find a cozy window or a rooftop, knock back some camp sauce, and pick off enemies from afar at like medium distance with my wonderful recoil. And overall, I recommend this weapon for medium range engagements, just because I, I just don't like it in close quarters. Just. It's just not a, it's just not a FAMAS or it's not an AEK. You just have to be careful in close quarters. Just be careful that you don't sprint too much because that's essentially what gets you killed in close quarters with the LED 5A2. So with all that said, just be sure to use it at medium range predominantly and be careful in the gunfights within 8 meters. That's basically all the advice that I have for the LED 5A2. And the next weapon that we have is the AK-74M. The reason that I decided to include this assault rifle next is because it is extremely similar to the LA 5A2 in terms of its characteristics. Like, okay, for example, the AK-74M has the same damage with a maximum of 25 and a minimum of 18.4, it has the same rate of fire at 650 rounds per minute, and the same magazine capacity of 30 rounds. It also has a slightly, and I mean slightly, it's very slightly, it has a slightly better reload time than the LED 5A2 with a time of 3.20 seconds while empty and 2.20 seconds while containing rounds in the magazine. But the recoil of the AK-74M is also different from the LED 5A2. Instead of being balanced in recoil on either side, like the LED 5A2, the AK-74M kicks up and slightly to the right, which might be viewed as less favorable than the LED 5A2, but here's where the advantage of the 74M kicks in. Okay. The AK-74M has much better initial recoil. Now, initial recoil is essentially how the first shot you fire compares to the remainder of your recoil. For example, the AK-74M has very light initial recoil, meaning that the recoil is very consistent throughout the duration that you fire the weapon. But the LA-58A2 has a much higher initial recoil, meaning that when you first start to fire the LA-58A2, you have really high recoil, but it tapers off as you continue to put rounds down range. So, I would view this as an advantage of the AK-74M over the LED 5A2 because the AK-74M has more consistent recoil. So to sum it up for you, the LED 5A2 has more recoil, but it's more vertical and linear. But the AK-74M is a little more unpredictable, but the overall recoil is lighter. And they're both outstanding weapons and both should be used in a similar manner as they're both so baller at medium to long range. Like they're just so wonderful. And yet again, be careful in close quarters because that low rate of fire can get very, very frustrating with both of these guns. That's the one thing that I have to say. It's just like the LED 5A2, it exceeds, ex it's so extremely good at medium range, but still that low rate of fire can sort of get you into trouble in close quarters if you're not very, very mindful of your hip fire. So that's my main piece of advice. Use it very, very openly and, and, and aggressively while at medium range and be very careful in close quarters. And the next weapon on the list is the AEK-971. I know in the last assault rifle guide, I basically portrayed this weapon as the god gun. You know, that's it's Sasha that weighs 150 kilograms and fires custom tube cartridges and yum 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 yum. And although it is still very effective, it's not quite as effective as it was pre-patch. It still has a maximum damage of 25, and obviously, like all the other assault rifles, the minimum damage hasn't buffed up to 18.4. 
It still fires at a rate of 900 rounds per minute and has a magazine capacity of 30 rounds. There's no surprise there. It has an empty reload time of 3.72 seconds and a reload time of 2.65 seconds while still containing rounds in your current magazine. And it's also capable of firing both fully automatic, burst, and single shot modes. And much like the FAMAS, the AK-971 is another weapon that just dominates in close quarters. The 900 rounds per minute just, it just melts people. It's like a flamethrower. I remember picking up this weapon, it's one of the first ones that I used after the patch, and it's still oh so deadly in one-on-one -on -one gunfights. And just because it's good in close quarters due to the rate of fire doesn't necessarily mean that it's awful at long range, but you have to master the recoil. Like, there is an awkward change to the recoil from this weapon in the patch, and it's definitely, okay, it's definitely noteworthy. Okay, so, firstly, you should know the AEK-971 has stronger horizontal recoil than it does vertical recoil. That means that it kicks side to side more than it does up and down. And in addition, it recoils more, a lot more to the left than it does to the right, and that's, I, th that's mainly where the awkwardness kicks in, in my opinion. The majority of the weapons in the game kick either upward or up and to the right, and transitioning from using all of those types of weapons to the weapon like the AEK-971 with a recoil that pulls to the left, it can be kind of challenging and awkward, if you know what I'm saying. And, okay, this is what I'm trying to say. It's not difficult to use this weapon properly in close quarters. Obviously, you just jump at the guy and your amazing rate of fire just lights him up like a Roman candle. But for medium range and beyond, this weapon takes some serious getting used to just because just that unorthodox recoil that bounces side to side and pulls predominantly to the left. And overall, when in doubt, use it like the FAMAS, just run around like your Sergeant Enigma and you'll do just fine. But it takes some serious getting used to and some serious practice if you want to be good with it at anything beyond medium range. So it's really easy to use in close quarters, but the longer ranges are much more difficult to master. And the next weapon on the list is the Dat 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 F2000 or the F2K. People call it so many different things. Let's call it the F2000, shall we? Yet again, I decided to put the F2000 in this particular position because it's very similar to the AEK 971. It has the same damage with a max of 25 and a minimum of 18.4, a similar rate of fire, and I say similar but not the same, a similar rate of fire at 850 rounds per minute and a magazine size of 30 rounds. The reload times are also very similar. The F2000 reloads in 3.6 seconds while empty and 2.65 seconds while still containing rounds in your current magazine. The recoil is also very similar. They both have more horizontal as in side to side recoil than they do vertical recoil. That's another one of their similarities. But I think overall, the F2000 is probably the uglier sister if you will. Now, okay, they both have really high initial recoil, which I explained earlier, meaning that the recoil of the two weapons that when you first start out is very very fierce but it tapers off as you continue to fire however the f2000 still has more vertical recoil and pulls to the left as well the hip fire spread on the f2000 is also worse but you know what like beyond the statistics the aek 971 just feels better in my opinion like for example okay it kills slightly faster in close quarters with 900 rounds per minute instead of the 850 rounds per minute of the f2000 and the AEK just seems to have more favorable recoil. Like, the, the vertical muzzle climb of the F2000 just isn't as easy to control. And don't let this deter you from using the F2000 altogether. I just feel like, and I consider the F2000 to be slightly worse than the AEK, I, I don't want that to deter you from using it at all. Like, just because the F2000 might be slightly worse than the AEK 971 does not make it an awful weapon by any means. They're both great weapons using close quarters through their wonderful rates of fire, and I think they should both both be used in a similar fashion due to the similar characteristics that they have in so many different areas. And it's the same thing. Close quarters is really easy because the rate of fire just melts people. But still, yet again, just like the AK-971, the F-2000 takes some serious getting used to if you need to get kills at medium range. Like getting kills at medium range is much more difficult with the F-2000 than getting kills at close range. Close range is real easy, medium range is much more difficult. And it's something else that you have to master just like the AK-971. And the next weapon we have is the M416. The M416 has a maximum damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 18.4, firing at a rate of 750 rounds per minute and having a magazine size of 30 rounds. It also has an empty reload time of 2.5 seconds and a reload time of 1.9 seconds while still containing rounds in your current magazine. 
It's also capable of firing fully automatic and single shot. It ain't got no burst, dog. And you want to know what the M416 is? It's essentially one of those middle ground assault rifles like the M16A3. And what I mean by that is, what makes it so great is that it's good at everything, but outstanding at nothing. Like, okay, it has a decent rate of fire at 750 rounds per minute, a light recoil that pulls up and to the right, and had, it has a quick reload time as well. I like to refer to it as an AK-74M with some spunk. Like, it's got the characteristics of the AK-74M and the L85A2 that make them successful at medium range, while it still fires 100 rounds per minute more than those two weapons. And to put it simply, it's a versatile weapon that functions well in most any situation, but that's the catch, bro. For example, the FAMAS destroys people at close range, but it's terrible at medium range. The L85A2 is tremendous at medium range, but it really isn't all that effective in close quarters. The M416 is something that blends the characteristics of these two contrasting types of weaponry into a middle ground assault rifle. So essentially, if you don't know what to expect from a certain team, or which assault rifle to choose for a certain map or game type, the M416 offers adaptability that will aid you in basically any gunfight that you enter. So next up we're going to have a similar assault rifle that I want to contrast and compare to the M416, which is the M16A3. Now, yet again, the M16A3 is very similar to the M416. It has the same damage with a max of 25 and a minimum of 18.4, the same magazine size 30 rounds with a slightly higher rate of fire at 800 rounds per minute. They also fire in both full auto or single firing modes. Neither one offers a burst firing mode. It ain't got no burst, dog. It also has a slightly faster reload time of 2.37 seconds while empty, and 1.8 seconds while containing rounds in your current magazine, which is witchcraft, by the way. Uh, you guys remember on the previous assault rifle guide, it was just, oh lord, because no other assault rifle reloads faster than the M16A3. I mean, other than the M16A4, of course, but we'll get to that later. So in terms of the M16A3, it's very similar to the M416. You know, same damage, both have very fast reload times, similar rates of fire, but I still think overall, I would still give the M16A3, I'm still debating this in my brain as I play Battlefield over and over, but I have to give the edge to the M16A3. Now granted, they both have very similar recoil, right? The M16A3 has more initial recoil, but less overall recoil, while the M416 has less initial recoil, but more overall recoil than the M16A3, but still, due to the weapons being identical in virtually every way, I have to side with the M16A3 simply because it fires at 50 rounds per minute higher than the M416. I mean, it only seems logical, right? The two weapons have very similar characteristics, yet one kills slightly faster than the other, so it, at least in my opinion, I think the M16A3 is better, but yet again, it's another situation just like the AEK-971 and the F2000. Just because the M16A3 may be better than the M416 doesn't make the M416 an awful assault rifle by any means. They're both wonderful, middle ground, versatile assault rifles that are great at both medium and close range, and my declaration that the M16A3 is better should not deter you from using the M416, it's just what the stats are telling me. But just because the M416 might be slightly inferior doesn't make it a bad gun by any means. Just try them both out and tell me what you think, maybe you think the opposite, maybe you think the 416 is better than the M16A3, but that's just what I think. Now. Next up, we're going to compare the M16A3 to its twin sister, the M16A4. The M16A4 is not surprisingly very similar to the M16A3 in terms of raw stats. It has the same damage as in 25 maximum and 18.4 minimum, with a reload speed of 2.37 seconds empty, and 1.8 seconds while not, and a magazine size of 30 rounds. It also has the same rate of fire, 800 rounds per minute, despite the fact that it is only capable of burst or single fire. But it's just one of those guns where, supposedly, if you can burst fire fast enough, you can achieve 800 rounds per minute, however implausible that may seem. So overall, it's very similar to the M16A3 when just looking at the stats, but the patch changed a few things about the M16A4, and it's no longer the exact same on paper like it was pre-patch. Now, okay. What DICE essentially did was this. They decreased the horizontal or side-to-side -side recoil of the M16A4, and increase the vertical recoil compared to the M16A3. In addition to the recoil, DICE also made the M16A4's hip fire slightly tighter than the M16A3, so theoretically this was supposed to make the M M16A4 more suited for medium range engagements compared to the M16A3, 
and I think that change pretty much does that in a nutshell if you ask me. I can tell you with complete confidence that I definitely prefer the A4 at range compared to the A3. I just find, I just need to find this rhythm with the recoil and the burst fire of the A4 that really aids me in taking out multiple targets at range. But then again, in close quarters, the M16 A3 is so much better than the A4. So much better. I mean, yes, the stat sheet, yet again. The stat sheet says that they have the same rate of fire, but I really don't think you can squeeze 800 rounds per minute out of the A4. And overall, burst just doesn't work as well for me in close quarters compared to the A3. It's another one of those things, like I said, Supposedly, if you're like Naniwa or one of those Korean StarCraft players, oh, my, my APM is like 200 million and I can like type a 5,000 word essay in 30 seconds and then make some... Uh, I, I don't get it. Like, I don't really think that burst fire can really keep up with automatic fire. Even if the stats sheet says that they both have 800 rounds per minute, I really don't buy it. But I overall think that the M16 A4 is much worse in close quarters than the M16 A3. M16 A3, the automatic fire is much better up close. And yes, you could tell me, get some skill, Badger. Use the M16 A3 full auto and you can just tap fire it and burst fire it on your own. I think there may be some truth to that, but from plain old experience with the two weapons, I seem to just do much better with the M16 A4 at range. I just simply do better. I really can't tell you why, but the burst and the recoil just seems to fall in my favor. So I really think that for close quarters maps, you're probably going to want to go for the M16 A3, and any type of map where you can afford to be conservative with your play style, you know, medium range, and just hit the enemy from far away, use the M16 A4. My number one tip for this weapon, just relax, bro. Just relax. I know many players and many Carls that just panic while using burst fire weapons. They just expend all the bullets really quickly because they're worried that the enemy who's using a full auto weapon is going to kill them first, but don't do that. Just don't do that, Carl. Just relax, fire sustained burst, and don't go all out burst. Don't just ruin all your bullets all at once. Unless the guy's right in front of your face trying to kill you, you should probably get rid of all your bullets as quickly as possible. So overall, just relax and you'll be fine. The next weapon for discussion is also very similar to the M16A4, which is the KH-2002. Now, I'm not going to go too crazy into the KH-2002 because it's extremely similar to the M16A3 and A4. It has the same damage as both of the M16s with a maximum of 25 and a minimum of 18.4. With 30 rounds in a magazine and a rate of fire of 800 rounds per minute. It's also capable of firing both burst and single firing modes, much like the M16A4, but that's where the similarities end. First of all, the reload times of the KH-2002 are awful compared to the M16A4 with reload times of 3.65 seconds while empty and 2.9 seconds while not, it is significantly, if not astronomically worse in this category. It is so much worse than reload. And basically, the only other difference between the KH-2002 and the M16A4 is the recoil. Like basically, okay. The KH-2002 has less initial recoil and it has more horizontal recoil while the M16A4 has much more vertical recoil. So, you know what I'm saying, these weapons are virtually identical in every way. Like, it's basically the suckier reload time, the KH-2002, and it's horizontal recoil versus the vertical recoil of the M16A4. That's about it. Like, despite the fact that I use the M16A4 more due to the quicker reload, and I think the recoil is also easier to adjust to, they're very similar and deserve to be used in a very similar fashion. And the next weapon on the list is the gun that used to suck, but is now godlike. An enemy is godlike. The AN-94 is the next weapon on the list. The AN-94 has a maximum damage of 25 and a minimum damage of 18.4 with 3 rounds in magazine and 2 different rates of fire. Under burst and single firing modes, it's capable of firing at a rate of 1200 rounds per minute. When switching to full auto, however, the rate of fire is half that at 600 rounds per minute. It also has a reload time of 3.5 seconds while empty and 2.6 seconds if you still contain rounds in your current magazine. And might I start out by saying, this is not at all the same weapon that I reviewed in the last assault rifle guide. The addition of the burst mode, firing 1200 rounds per minute, finally making this weapon a... It was previously a piece of garbage, and now it's a two-shot machine. In the latest patch, they also reduced the vertical recoil of the weapon, but it's still tied for the second highest vertical recoil among the assault rifles with only the G3A3 having more. Just hit up a heavy barrel and the thing virtually turns into a sniper rifle once you adjust the weapon, but that's the main thing you have to do. You have to adjust to it to be successful with it. And I noticed that 
This is essentially what it was for me in a nutshell. If I switch from a full auto weapon to the A94, I'm dreadful with it. But if I play for if I play with it for an extended period of time, like a couple hours, by the end of that couple hours, I just become godlike. And I mean like godlike. Like somebody's feeding Scion in mid lane. It's just like an enemy is godlike. That's definitely me with the A94. Not bragging at all. I feel that's sort of pretentious, but if you get used to it, the the gun is amazing. And what I mean by that is that it's amazing if you get used to the two round burst. So I definitely think that it's something that you have to adjust to in order to really be successful, but I also don't want you to think that, oh, the thing is burst, must be awful in close quarters, bro. That's not true at all. Due to the possibility of firing 1200 rounds per minute while bursting, if your trigger finger is mighty enough, you know, if you're Naniwa or one of those Korean StarCraft players or any of those guys, or if you can click your mouse or your R1 or your right trigger on Xbox, if you can hit that fast enough, you can melt people at close range. But that's essentially what makes this, it, it's what makes it so deadly. It's a laser beam rifle at medium range, very accurate with the same damage as the other assault rifles, and if you can fire fast enough, it's great at close range as well, but it's still something that has to be adjusted to before you get your money's worth out of it. Like, I know I've said this so many times, but it's literally a matter of adjusting. Once you adjust, you become godlike. End of story. And yes, I am very, very happy that this weapon is no longer a piece of garbage. So thank you, Dice. And the final weapon on the list is the G3A3, also known as Dat Hipster Cannon. Before I dive into anything else, I must tell you that the G3A3 has greater range capabilities than the other assault rifles. This is because it doesn't reach its minimum damage until 60 meters instead of at 50 meters like all the other assault rifles. I don't know if I could realistically take someone down beyond 60 meters with the G3A3, but I guess DICE wanted to give this weapon an advantage at range. And you know what, even after the patch, the G3A3 is wonderful at pretty much any range. You know, the the patch gave it new damage, okay, new damage with a maximum of 34 and a minimum of 22 with a rate of fire of 550 rounds per minute and a magazine size of 20 rounds. It reloads in 3.4 seconds while empty and 2.1 seconds if you still contain rounds in your current magazine. It can also fire fully automatic or single fire and is just like the AN-94, godlike if you can use it correctly. You know, pre-patch it had that maximum damage of 30 meaning that it was a 4 shot kill at close range, but with a new patch it's now 34 damage, meaning that it 3 shots people at close range, and that is extremely noticeable if you ask me, like if you just use it now, you'll notice the difference. But that also doesn't mean that it's bad at range. Your bullets do so much damage, and have so much less of a damage drop off compared to the other assault rifles, which I previously mentioned, it feels this plane deadly at range in your hands. However, Yes, I mean, I want to say this bluntly, but I'm trying to describe this accurately. Okay, the gun is good at close range and long range, but still, the 20 round magazine is its Achilles heel, if you will. Obviously, it's significantly less than the 30 round magazine of most of the other assault rifles. Also, the reload time is fairly average, and it has some seriously fierce recoil. But I actually really enjoy the recoil. I know that doesn't sound, that don't make no sense, Badger, but okay. Many of the assault rifles pull up to the right, or some have some serious horizontal recoil, but the G3A3 is a little different. It is very, very light. It is very, very light and balanced recoil to the left and to the right, while it has really strong vertical recoil. So yes, it does kick like a mule, but it's all up and down, it's all very linear. It doesn't bounce around like popcorn recoil from Moss, and it's for that reason, I find it much easier to control, despite the fact that it has the highest vertical recoil of all the assault rifles. So, although it is great at virtually all ranges, and overall it's a very powerful assault rifle, be mindful of the 20 round magazine. That's the one thing you're going to notice that you don't like. Because you run out of bullets much quicker than the other assault rifles, and you will notice it very quickly. And, that's about it, bro. I was, what is this, like 34, 35 minutes now? That's a little alarming, but... I hope you guys enjoy this revised version of my assault rifle guide. I'll probably proceed, or not proceed, I will probably make an engineer guide in the next few weeks. Hopefully, hopefully DICE doesn't come up with a, like a patch tomorrow. That would be very unfortunate, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will see you guys next time. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald und später. Bis später. But I will see you guys next time. Goodbye and see ya.